Okay, let's go live. It's James speaking, trainingsites.io. Um, we got to start prompting like a boss. we got to take control of all of these AI tools that we're using. Today, I want to go over why that is so important and some of the things that make it kind of mandatory moving forward. If you missed it yesterday, I had a, a bit of a video put together that was talking about this brand new way of prompting. And the whole idea here was that we're going to have to start treating the AI tools that we're already using that we're normally interfacing with by texting or adding text in a text chat back and forth to ChatGPT or Claude or Gemini or any of these tools, we're going to have to figure out how to prompt in a different way. And I want to go through why that's important and then how we're going to be able to do that and what it means to starting, building, and growing our education business. And again, I'll put the links to that particular one, uh, the other video about, you know, holding your meetings with your assistant. This one, I want to go through why it's really important and what's happening in the AI space with the tools you're already using. Now, I found out about this whole idea here uh, with um, multimodal prompting or verbally prompting or verbally interacting with the tools. And I found out about it, um, not found out about it, I started thinking more about it with this thing called vibe coding. You may hear that term uh, from time to time and basically what it is, it's a way for software developers to talk, to show pictures, to do text still, but explain how they want a piece of software to work and to look and who it's for and the problem that it solves in these vibe coding tools actually write the software to create the applications. But I was, as I was playing around with them, I was having a lot of trouble just using text explaining these multi-step processes and trying to explain what stuff looks like by text. It's really, really hard. And as I started thinking about that, I was going back and I said, well, what's happening with ChatGPT and Claude and Gemini and Google? What are they doing in the software that's changed from when we first started? And one of the big examples that I ran into is, as an example, in AI Studio, which introduced this whole idea of multimodal prompting and multimodal output. And if you haven't seen this before, I did a, a couple of videos on this one as well. I'll put the links below on the channel. But the thing that was cool here is that if I'm interacting with a multimodal AI tool, this is Gemini, but it's multimodal. So it can, if you look on the bottom here, it says talk, webcam, share screen. This means that I can verbally talk to the AI tool. I can show it my screen and I can show it me or whatever's on in the camera. This is multimodal input. So why am I just trying to put a pro text prompt in to explain what it is that I'm looking to have done as a task? So all of the basic ones that you're already using in text, they're starting to do this. This is where they're going. And you don't have any choice as to whether or not it happens. It's coming. You can stay doing text prompts and trying to do that. Or you can at least start thinking about, I've got to start learning how to talk to these AI tools. And I need to be the boss and be in control of it. You know, if you think about it, you don't manage a team. I was talking about, you know, the previous video about when you're the boss in the meeting, it's like it's your team, right? A That one AI tool actually is like a team because you can get it to be the accountant, the marketer, the social media expert, the software engineer. You can talk to it. you got this huge staff now that's available to you. Um, it's very hard to manage a team with text only. You want to be able to go back and talk to them and work with them on the outcome that you want to have happen. So it isn't prompting now, it's managing your team. And there's already some AI tools that are starting to do that. Two of them that I've used before and I've done some videos on, these ones are called general agents. One is called Manus and one is called GenSpark. Now, these are just like having uh, ChatGPT as or Claude, where it just says basically, hey, have Claude do one task, have it do another task, have it do another task and connect them together. Uh, an example that I did with one of them, I think I have it up here just to give you an uh, idea of how this one works. Uh, yeah, when I was doing this one, basically I said uh, I said to this one in Manus, I said, hey, create a course on this. What I want you to do is create a course with seven lessons. 
Then what I want you to do is I want you to upload it to my website and then I want you to create a product in my shopping cart. I don't want to set the price at this part and it make sure that it happens. So if I was doing that in a text prompt, just think what would happen. I would try and write out some big long thing. No, you can't because it's all of these small kind of agents or tasks put together to get an outcome, which was create a course and get it ready for sale on my website for a particular price. Very, very difficult stuff, but that's coming. It's here now. It's available on other platforms. So here's an example. We got Manus, GenSpark, we've got ChatGPT, AI Studio, Multimodal, Multi-Step Agents. That's coming and we're trying to manage all of these things with text in a text box. Not going to happen. So what does this actually mean for us and what are the kind of the agentic prompting styles that we have to use or what are the things that are important when we're doing voice prompts which we weren't necessarily doing uh, before. So let me just make sure I move this down a little bit so that we can see it. The thing that's cool about voice prompting or verbally prompting any of these tools um, is you're actually creating momentum. When you're talking, just like I'm talking now, I can't keep up texting this. There's no way that I can do it. I can verbally uh, present a whole bunch more ideas quickly and easily based on talking to the tool as opposed to trying to text on it. And anytime that you're doing text, I'm sure you've seen this before, you text something in and then you go, well, that's not necessarily what I was wanting, or maybe I have a better way of explaining it. So you're typing the text in. And this even happens if you're copying and pasting prompts. You still have to add to it and you're trying to figure out in text typing in, uh, how do I actually explain this so it understands it? When you're dealing with voice, it allows you to think clearly, but it also allows you to actually do things much faster. When you're typing in text, the text interface is actually an editor because it stops and starts you as you're trying to clarify, is this what I really mean or is this what I was doing? So when you're actually going and using an example, let me just bring one up here. Um, you know, instead of typing, for example, please create, this is if you gave it a command, right? If you just gave it a command, you said something like, uh, please create a five lesson outline on branding for freelancers. freelancers. So you put a text prompt in and you get some kind of response and then you put another text prompt in. It's back and forth with these simple text prompts. What about if you just said, uh, okay, I got an idea. I want to help freelancers build a brand. What would a five lesson course look like? Uh, if I wanted for them to just get started and be totally finished and comfortable from the start uh, without and being ready to present themselves online. So which one can be done quickly without iterations that explains a lot more verbally or in text? Of course, it's verbally. Uh, so momentum, no editing of putting in text or iterations of it. We're just having a conversation with our staff. Um, the other one is, is this whole idea now of um, intent. Uh, if you've been prompting or following the stuff about text prompting, uh, you know, for example, how to make it sound authentic. And there was a whole series of prompting styles or ways that you put text in and special instructions so that when you texted it, give you gave you responses back that actually sounded like you. The cool thing that's happening with verbal interaction with all of the AI tools, and there's one called Sesame that is really kind of cool. I did a video on that one as well is it understands and it's starting to understand the emotion, energy, and the intent. And what this is about is it understands verbally the pacing, the speed at which you talk, the volume, all of those pieces are starting to make sense when you're interacting and it knows, is this serious? Is there a time crunch on it? Or are you just noodling, playing around with ideas, trying to figure things out? You can't do that in text to the same way that you can when you're verbally interacting with your AI assistant getting complex tasks and businesses processes put together. So all of that stuff, you know, you just can't do it. And the one that's important, I think here is how serious it is. Because if you do a prompt and you're not explaining the context of, look, I got to have a course ready in seven days. It's got to have eight lessons and I got to earn this much money and I have to have the marketing done as opposed to, um, create me a list of seven lessons for a course on 
text or verbally interacting? Which one provides more context? And remember, the amount of context that we provide is the part that the AI tool gives us the most and best responses on when it has the most context. Verbally, can't beat it, not even close. Um, here's the other one, like when we're thinking of things and we're working verbally prompting with all of these tools, uh, voice directed automations mirror how you work. If I'm in my meeting and I'm talking to my AI assistant and I'm trying to figure out multi-step, like those agents, it's like, do this, and then once you have that, do this, and once you have that, do this, and you go back and forth like that, and you're trying to text it. These are all disjointed tasks. But if you have a big picture in your head and you can verbally explain what the big picture is and say, hey, look, these are the ways that I think it can be done. What do you think about it? You're my staff, you're my AI agent. This is the way that I normally do it. I do this, I do this, I do this. Is there some other ways around it? You're thinking visually, it's your ability to verbalize what you're actually thinking and the picture that you have that allows the AI tool to give you better responses. We're wired for dialogue. It's all over the place. It's like that big picture that we have, not texting in a linear fashion. We're not wired for data. We're wired for images, for hearing, and for reading, which is actually auditory anyway. Even when you read something like data on text, you're reading it to yourself and you're listening to it while you're reading it. So that's how we're wired, not for typing text in. Um, so brains love conversations. They don't like being given commands. No one likes do this, do this, do this. It's like, hey, here's a big project. We need to have this kind of goal done, or this is what I'd like to have happen. At the end of the day, the end of the week, this is the idea that I have. People love that, not do this, do this, do this, and kind of deal with whatever they get back. So, you know, this whole idea of being driven by vision is important, especially as you get older. I'm a little bit follically challenged. I've been doing this a long time. Uh, for me, I've seen a bunch of things and I can explain a lot of things because I've seen it and lived it. If you're that 45 part, uh, plus creator, that person that has a whole bunch of passion and experience for something, which is easier for you? Talking about all of your experiences or trying to type it down and put it into some simple technical description that an AI tool can find out about or understand, let alone an AI agent or some kind of automation. Um, and the one that I really like the best is when you're talking to your AI staff member, your AI tool, your AI agent, you're just, you're vibing with them and you're just having a conversation. You're noodling ideas. You're putting all of this stuff together and you're collaborating with a staff member. You're not just commanding it. It's not a linear tool. It's like, hey, what should we do? What can we do? What are some ideas? What works? What doesn't work? These things are fu fundamentally different than writing in a text box. And I, I was kind of thinking about this from the idea of writing a song, right? Uh, if you see... <laughs> If you see the Beatles getting together, and if you're old enough to know who the Beatles are, but if you know anytime, it's not like people write a song and then they go into the studio and record it. It's like they get together, some of the band members talk with each other, they get together, they try some stuff, they go back and forth, but it's not a one and done. These are real collaborative uh, exercises that you have with the tools that you just can't have with text. So we're in a situation right now where if I look at it from the big picture, uh, you know, we've got AI agents and automations are coming. We've got verbal interaction that is available now for us in all of the tools. What are the things that we have to do to take advantage of that? This is kind of the big picture for me, and hopefully it'll give you a little bit of my idea where I think things uh, are coming. There's so much information, whether it's a course or marketing materials or business strategies, whatever it is that you're coming up with, our ability to explain the context is the most important part of it. And our inability to explain the context is going to get us the same results that everyone sees whenever they put in, give me five lessons on creating a course for this. So the real way that you are going to make your AI-generated 
leveraged content and ideas, your own, is being able to interact in a multimodal fashion and providing as much contact that is personal and unique to you. That's where the real value is. Don't think about giving commands on do this, do this, do this. Explain why you want the result and not necessarily how you want it done. Think about delegating tasks. I'm talking to my staff. I'm not saying you have to do it this way. I'm just saying, hey, you're, you've are you got this expertise here. How do you suggest that we do it? And then you are the human in the loop. You're the one that says, yeah, but I've tried it that way. It doesn't work. Or, hey, maybe that's a good idea. We can try it in the future. But delegate tasks. Don't think about doing a text prompt for a command. What's the big picture? How can I get my staff to offload that so I don't have to do it anymore? Leverage multimodal, strategically show, don't tell. I learned that vibe coding. Think about how can I use a picture or how can I use a video or how can I use text now to provide that context? Don't just think about prompting something in. The tools now are allowing you to talk to them. Just use them, try them out, see what happens. There's all sorts of choices available. Look for the little microphone in the bottom. Uh, let me see. Look for the little microphone in the bottom of the screen when you're using ChatGPT. Start looking at these agents like Manus uh, and GenSpark and start interacting with stuff. And the one that I really, really like and I think don't people take advantage of is when you are verbally interacting with AI, it allows you to better explain what you don't want. It's not just here's what I want, it's just say, here's what I want, but don't do this and don't go down that rabbit hole. I get stuck, I'm sure you do too, if you're doing text, you may get some answers that have nothing to do with it and it keeps on using the answers or that it gave in all of the prompts and we're trying to clean it up when we're doing text prompts. If you're doing it verbally, it's a lot easier to say, don't follow that particular, no, I don't want any of that. It's a lot easier to verbally interact in a conversation and tell someone, a staff member, what you don't want them to do and or the limitations of what you want them to do when you're assigning them or giving them that task. And finally, iterate. Text is not learn a prompt, get a response. When you're verbally interacting and vocally getting involved and working with your staff member, just remember you can have a conversation anytime you want and no one is going to complain about your meetings because you're the boss and you now have an AI assistant. So hopefully this is helping you a little bit, thinking a little bit outside of the box and thinking, how can I be the boss? How can I start prompting like I'm the boss? I'm the one in control. I'm the one that's leveraging AI. I'm not stuck typing. I'm starting to get personally involved with my staff members and I have as big a staff as I want. I don't need to go out and try and vet people anymore. I don't need to hire additional people. I can just start talking to my staff and working and getting the results that I want that are closest to what I'm trying to accomplish. So I hope you enjoyed that. My name is James. It's uh, trainingsites.io and make sure to go to trainingsites.io forward slash join there. That's my personally branded campus where I keep all of my videos, all of the work that I do. It's all there and available for you to start, build and grow your education business. So like and subscribe to the channel. I'll be back shortly with another video. Again, I'll put the links below to the ones that I did, but I'm really excited about this whole prompt like a boss idea. And I hope that you take the time to investigate it and relieve yourselves of all of the stress of trying to find the very best text prompt to use. Take care, expect the best.